The Japanese culture is very rich in myths, ghost stories, urban legends and supernatural phenomena. In Japan, spirits and demons are popularly termed yokai. The word yokai means bewitching, attractive, calamity, spectre, apparition, mystery, and suspicious. Yokai are a class of supernatural monsters, spirits, and demons, they may be good, they may be evil, they may be in between, or they may just be mischievous. But there are three most dreaded monsters who, according to legend, pose the greatest threats to Japan's existence. They are the Oni, the Kitsune, and the Tengu. And they still instill fear in the minds of the Japanese people even till today. Now I'll tell you their stories and how they rose to become the most feared yokai in all of Japan. 1. The Shuten Doji, popularly known as the Oni. Before he became a legendary monster, Shuten Doji was a troublesome orphan child. He was very strong and very smart, so much so that people believed his father must have been a demon or a dragon. At an early age he was apprenticed to the Mount Hiyoi Temple complex and became a monk. However, monastic life did not suit him. He was disrespectful, he got into fights with the other monks, and he was lazy in his studies. He spent most of his time drinking sake, which is how he earned the nickname Shuten Doji, or Little Drunkard. One night during a festival, Shuten Doji got really drunk and decided to play pranks. He put on an Oni mask and snuck around the festival, jumping out of the darkness and scaring festival goers. After the festival, he was unable to take the Oni mask off. It had fused to his face, becoming a part of his body. When he sought help from the abbot, he was scolded for his wickedness. He was mocked and teased by the other monks for his ugliness. His heart became like an Oni too, wicked, and full of anger. Shuten Doji left the monastery and fled into the mountains to live as a hermit. In his solitude, Shuten Doji grew to hate the world. He embraced his wickedness and began to study black magic. He used his power and wit to attack the merchants and travelers moving through his area. He kidnapped young men and women to drink their blood and eat their organs. With each passing year he grew more powerful, and more violent. His infamy grew and other wicked people began to flock to his cause. Like Shuten Doji, these people transformed into Oni. Before long, Shuten Doji had become like a king to a small army of demons. Shuten Doji and his thugs built a castle on Mount O. He set his sights on wreaking vengeance upon the cruel world, and becoming ruler over all of Japan. Using the mountain as a base of operations, Shuten Doji's army began to attack the capital in greater frequency. Their kidnappings and murders attracted the attention of Emperor Akio, who decided that Shuten Doji needed to be stopped before he became any more powerful. The Emperor commanded his bravest warrior, Raiko, to climb Mount O and bring back the head of Shuten Doji. Raiko and his men ventured into the mountains and found the army of Oni inside their castle, drinking sake. They poisoned the sake, and when the Oni had all fallen into a poison-induced drunken slumber, Raiko and his men snuck into the castle. They slew the Oni one by one, and finally they reached Shuten Doji. Raiko swung his sword and sliced off the Oni king's head. Shuten Doji was so powerful that even after he had been killed, his head continued to bite at the heroes. Eventually the head was buried outside of the city limits, where it could cause no more trouble, too. Tamamo no Mei, popularly called the Kitsune. Tamamo no Mei was a wicked, shape-changing, nine-tailed fox whose evil was only matched by her ambition. She disguised herself as a human child and was found by an elderly couple who were unable to have children of their own. They named her Mika's Yum and raised her as their daughter. Mika's Yum grew to be an exceptionally talented and beautiful young woman, and attracted the attention of everyone around her. When she was seven years old, she recited poetry in front of Emperor Taba, who was so taken with her that he offered her a job as a servant of the imperial court. Mika's Yum excelled at court, absorbing knowledge like a sponge. There was no question she could not answer, whether it was about music, history, astronomy, religion, or Chinese classics. Her clothes were always clean and unwrinkled. She always smelled pleasant. 
Mikazume had the most beautiful face in all of Japan, and everyone who saw her loved her. One summer, during a poetry recital, a powerful rainstorm hit. The candles in the recital room were snuffed out by the wind. Suddenly, a bright light emanated from Mikazume's body, illuminating the room. Everybody at the recital was shocked, and it was declared that she must have had an exceedingly good and holy past life. Mikazume was given the name Tamamo no Mei, and Emperor Taba, already exceedingly fond of her, made her into his consort. Shortly afterwards, Emperor Taba became gravely ill. The country's best physicians could not figure out what was wrong with him. The highest priests prayed for him to get better, but he only grew worse. Sorcerers were called in to divine the cause of his illness. According to the sorcerers, the emperor was being made sick by someone close to him. They suspected that Tamamo no Mei was actually a fox in disguise, but the emperor refused to believe that his beloved could be something wicked. In fact, she had been using her magic to shorten the emperor's life, and was responsible for his condition. Tamamo no Mei was ordered to participate in the divine rituals to save the emperor's life. The sorcerers reasoned that if she were an evil spirit, she would not be able to recite the holy words or perform the ritual. She was reluctant to participate, for she was afraid of what would happen when the sorcerers identified her as the cause of the emperor's illness. But due to court decorum, she had little choice. She recited the holy words and played her part extremely well. But just as she was about to wave the ceremonial staff, she vanished. The sorcerer's suspicions were confirmed. The emperor summoned his best warriors and ordered them to find Tamamo no Mei. An army of 80,000 men was sent forth to hunt her down. News came that a nine-tailed fox had been spotted in the east. The army chased her all the way to the plains of Nasano. The night before she was caught, Tamamo no Mei appeared to an archer named Mia Anosyuk in a dream. She was crying. She told him that tomorrow he would find her, and she begged him to spare her life. Her beauty was indescribable. She appeared so pitiable. But Mia Anosyuk's sense of duty was stronger than his sense of pity, and he rejected her plea. The next day Mia Anosyuk spotted a nine-tailed fox on the plains. He fired two arrows at it, piercing its side and neck. The swordsman Kazuzanosyuk swung his blade at its head. The fox fell and Tamamo no Mei's life ended. The army returned to Kyoto with the fox's body as proof of her defeat. However, Tamamo no Mei's evil did not end with her death. One year after she died, Emperor Kono died, airless. The following year, her lover, the former Emperor Taba, died as well. This paved the way for a succession crisis that spelled the end of imperial power in Japan and allowed the rise of the first shoguns. 3. Emperor Satoku, popularly known as Tengu. Emperor Satoku rose to the throne when he was just a child. Though official records stated that Satoku was the eldest son of Emperor Taba, it was an open secret that he was actually sired by Taba's father, the retired Emperor Shirakawa. Shirakawa wielded considerable power behind the throne in his retirement, and he forced Taba to abdicate in favor of the young Satoku, whom Shirakawa could control much more easily than the older and more ambitious Taba. After Shirakawa died, Taba became the power behind the throne. Taba hated Satoku, whom he considered a bastard son. He enacted his revenge upon Satoku by convincing the young emperor to appoint Taba's son as his successor and join him in retirement. Satoku did so, and Kono, at only three years old, became the new emperor. Kono was entirely the puppet of his further Taba. He had all Satoku's supporters transferred to distant provinces and filled the capital with people loyal to Taba. Emperor Kono was sickly his whole life. He passed away, childless, at the age of 17. This sparked a succession crisis between Tuba's next oldest son and Satoku's son, both of whom had a claim on the throne. The imperial court, full of Tuba's supporters, decided in favor of Tuba's son, Goshirakawa. When Tuba died the following year, Satoku's supporters attempted to overthrow the young emperor Goshirakawa. There was a brief and bloody fight, but the rebellion was quickly put down. 
Goshirakawa's revenge against the rebels was merciless. They and their families were executed, and Satoka was banished to Sanuki province. Satoka lived out the remainder of his life in exile as a monk. He shaved his head and devoted his efforts to hand copying the Holy Sutras. After years of work, Satoku sent his prayer scrolls and the manuscripts to Kyoto as an offering for the imperial temples. Goshirakawa suspected that Satoku may have cursed the work, and refused to accept them. Instead, he had the manuscripts sent back to Satoku. This rejection proved to be the final straw for the exiled emperor. Satoku bit off his own tongue, and as he bled to death he wrote in his own blood a powerful curse against Japan and the emperor. He poured all of his hatred and resentment from his entire life into that curse. As he bled, he transformed into a great Tengu. His nails and his hair grew long, and he never cut them again for the rest of his life. When Satoku passed away, his body was set aside while his caretakers awaited funeral instructions from the emperor. After twenty days, his body was still as fresh as it had been on the day he died. Goshirakawa ordered that nobody should go into mourning, and that no state funeral would be held. While his coffin was taken to be cremated, a terrible storm rolled in. The caretakers placed the casket on the ground to take shelter. After the storm passed, the stones around the casket were soaked with fresh blood. When his body was finally cremated, the ashes rose into the sky, and descended upon Kyoto as a dark cloud. For many years after his death, disaster upon disaster struck the capital. Goshirakawa's successor, Emperor Naijo, died suddenly at age 23. Storms, plagues, fires, droughts, and earthquakes all pounded the capital. Imperial power weakened. Clan rivalries grew more and more violent. Many of Goshirakawa's allies were killed in battles, and the country stepped closer and closer towards disaster. Finally, in 1180, civil war broke out. After five years of bloody fighting, the power of the imperial court was drained, and the Kamara shogunate seized control of Japan. All of this was attributed to Emperor Satoku's curse. There are tales that Satoku's vengeance lingers even today. In 2012, when NHK broadcast the historical drama Terinokia Mori, an earthquake struck the Kanto region right at the moment when Emperor Satoku laid his curse. Of all the evil spirits out there in Japan, none of them has brought so much destruction and calamity as much as the Unik, the Kitsune and the Tengu. These three have brought terrors and caused dread for generations, not just among the indigenous people of Japan, but also outside the country. And so, that is how they became the three most dreaded yokai of Japan.